In today's video, we're going to look at how to find the domain of given rational functions. So let's take a look at a few examples. So in this problem, we are given the rational function f of x equals 2x squared minus 4, all divided by x plus 5. So if you recall, for rational functions, we know that um, it's a quotient of two polynomial functions. And each polynomial function, all polynomial functions, have a domain of all real numbers. Um, however, for a rational function, that's not the case. Because we know that whenever we have a fraction, that the denominator is not allowed to be 0. So to find the domain restrictions for rational functions, we need to figure out what makes our denominator 0. And then that's going to be the restricted values in our domain. So let's take a look at this. So we know that x plus 5 is not allowed to equal to 0. Uh, so what that means then is if we subtract 5, we get that x is not allowed to equal negative 5. Um, these are this is really the only domain restriction in this problem, because even if we were to find a value that makes the numerator 0, we are allowed to have 0 divided by some number. This gives us just 0. We just can't have the opposite be true. So in this case, this is the only domain restriction. So our domain would be the set of all x such that x is not equal to negative 5. This is the set, uh, set notation. Or in the interval notation, it would be from negative infinity up to negative 5. And then union from negative 5 to positive infinity. Basically everything except for 5. So let's look at another example. Um, in this example, we're given the rational function g of x equals 1 over x squared minus 4. Uh, the numerator is never going to be 0, so we don't have to worry about x-intercepts. Um, but the denominator, we can figure out what makes this 0. So this actually factors. This is factorable. So this is going to be 1 over... Uh, x minus 2 times x plus 2. So those are the factors of this. So we know that each factor individually is not allowed to equal 0 because if either factor was 0, the entire quantity would be 0. So we have two separate uh, uh, not values that we have to consider. So we know that x minus 2 cannot equal 0. We know that x plus 2 cannot equal 0. So we solve each of these and we get that x is not allowed to equal positive 2 and x is not allowed to equal negative 2. So our domain for this would be the set of all x such that x cannot equal negative 2 or x cannot equal positive 2. Um, and then in the interval notation, this one's a little longer. It's negative infinity to negative 2, union from negative 2 to positive 2, union from 2 to infinity. So that's the domain for this rational function. In this rational function, we have um, a cubic in the numerator, and we have a quadratic in the denominator. Uh, the cubic is 0 when x is 0. But again, that doesn't really matter, because that would just give us 0 divided by 1, which we know works. We can have that be 0. Um, so it's the denominator that we care about. So we know that x squared plus 1 is not allowed to equal 0. So this isn't factorable, but we could solve this using square roots. So if I subtract 1 from both sides, I get that x squared is not allowed to equal negative 1. And then when I take the square root of both sides, square root of both sides, uh, I get the square root of negative 1. But I know that this value, this value right here, is imaginary. It's an imaginary number. And when we're talking about the domain, when we're talking about domain of a rational function, this doesn't uh, is not accounted for in the domain. The domain has to only um, account for real real values that make this zero. So because we get an imaginary value, there's actually no domain restriction. So this does not have any um, values that make it zero that are in the real numbers. So there's no domain restriction. So that means that our domain is all real numbers, right? Or the set of all x such that x is an element of the real numbers. 
And in interval notation, it's just everything from negative infinity to infinity, all real numbers. Let's look at one more. So this last one, this last one again is factorable. So if we look at the numerator, um, we get that this is equal to uh, the numerator factors to be x minus 1 times the quantity x plus 1. And the denominator is just x minus 1. Now, if you were trying to write this in simplest terms, we see that we can cancel these x minus 1s, um, which ultimately is what this rational function is going to act like. It will act like this linear equation x plus 1 because these cancel uh, factors cancel. But we actually have to keep this value for a minute. So because our original function is defined to be x squared minus 1 divided by x minus 1, we actually still need to figure out what makes the denominator 0. Because of its original definition, we still have to account for this denominator. And it still is not allowed to equal 0. So we still have a domain restriction of 1 in this case. So the domain is the set of all x such that x cannot equal 1 or from negative infinity to 1 and then from 1 to infinity. So this is our domain, even though when we write this in simplest terms, it acts like this linear function. And we know the line, that a line has a domain of all real numbers. But in this case, this rational function has um, something that happens at one. And we'll talk more about that in another video, but this is called a removable discontinuity, a removable discontinuity. So our domain is the set of all X such that X cannot equal one or this in interval notation.